From the moment we step out of Vault 111, there is so much to explore across the Commonwealth, many of which is unmarked. From military stashes to hidden caves, we've also got skeletons fighting one another, some taking a bit of an ice bath. There's also bridges guarded by ominous crows, as well as basketball courts that, let's just say, the raiders have definitely been here before us. Hidden military bunkers, as well as power armor locations, make a regular appearance. So, without further ado, let's get right into it. Kicking off our unmarked location south of Vault 111 is, of course, Deacon's Outpost, complete with the railroad insignia as well as two dirty water and a purified water for any survivalist playthrough. It's a must-pass location before heading on to the next one. A neat location often overlooked west of Vault 111 is the abandoned shed. Inside, once you pass the novice locked door, you can find yourself a toolbox full of goodies as well as some other basic materials for settlement building and materials. There's also outside some blood leaf as well as hub flower. Another unmarked location southwest of Vault 111 is the medical tent. It's here. You can get yourself some early game supplies from first aid kit as well as a mattress, some silt beans, but do be careful of the glowing uh, rad roach that tends to be near these conveniently placed radioactive barrels. Here we have the Raider Pylon, very close to the Ranger Cabin. You can find uh, an entire gang here complete with uh, a guard dog and a campfire where they're making some mole wrapped for dinner. Uh, there's also a cooler and several other items dotting the place, but more importantly, you'll have to deal with the raiders themselves if you come in the vicinity. South of Vault 111 and Sanctuary, you can find a military APC bogged down in the middle of this kind of swamp. Inside, though, you can get yourself some first aid as well as some items off the fellow to the left here who has some ammunition that he was trying to hide. Now I don't know why they were dumping radioactive barrels, that was probably not a good idea. Not one bit. Due west of the ranger cabin near a pond you can find a wee bit of a hermit, another one, and this time they are a trader. Holding up with a little bit of a farm set up here, you can uh, trade some decent early game items with them and it is definitely worth your while visiting. And if you want to be a complete menace to society and you don't really care of the consequences, you could, of course, just go inside and raid quite a lot of the items that they have lying around. They didn't need them anyway. Venturing on from that trader and west of the ranger cabin, you can find an unmarked grave. Now, this grave does have a cigarette carton on top of it, a baseball cap, and a chem cooler with some Medex in it. Now, I can probably deduce that he was either a friend of the trader that we were just at, or it was here long before the bombs fell. In any case, I'd imagine the person buried here, uh, maybe it was due to cigarettes, or that was their favourite thing. The baseball cap might have been one thing they always wore as well, and the medics, maybe they had a slow, painful way to go. It is assumptions, of course, but uh, ones that we must consider when stumbling across places like this in the wastes. Swooping down just west of the Wicked Shipping Fleet lockup, there is a Blood Bug Stash. This uh, rather dangerous location, full of them, in fact, has uh, quite a few items for you to find. Along this back here, you can find a, oh, that broom will move, a first aid kit alongside some Mentats in the bath. There's also some buff out and a toolbox for the taking. The only thing you have to do is deal with the local wildlife before going on to the next place. Between the settlement of Abernathy Farm and the Ranger Cabin, you can find a little abandoned caravan. Inside there is ammunition, a toolbox, a cooler and first aid, as well as a wee mattress for all you survivalists that need to sleep. Outside you can find some bobby pins, so this place really does have it all. A location ominously close to the Dry Creek Shack is uh, just south of Abernathy Farm here. And we can see that a few barrels and a buildup of just general ground sediment has blocked this pipe leading on into the lake, leaving a location ripe for blotfies to leave some of their brood. Now, whilst we don't see them actually lay eggs, there is a toolbox of a novice lock beside this uh, 
maintenance fella. Perhaps he tried to uh, fix this and uh, let's just say it didn't go too well for them. Next up we have the Dry Creek Shack. A little shack overlooking the Wicked Shipping Fleet Lockup south of Abernathy Farm here. You can certainly rate it and see all the items you can get. There is a cooler, plenty of beer, booze and cigarettes. Out the back there's also a fridge that seems to be quite stocked. So I would say whoever was holding up here didn't go all that far. A notable location south of Abernathy Farm is this little campfire. It's here there are plenty of random encounters and I can't tell you how many times except when I need them to be here have I found traders and uh, your grandpa that's traveling with uh, the, wee, the wee girl. There's just there's there's so much to find here and uh, they decided not to show up today but alas we'll move on. East of Abernathy Farm there's actually a little rocky outcrop and here we have what I like to call the machete stash. You can find this fellow with some dirty water, a stim pack, a suitcase full of raider gear, perhaps he was about to join or he was fleeing, and of course a very trusty machete. Not a bad we find early on that's for sure. South of the Red Rocket truck stop there is a little half buried stash very close to the Concord water tower. Now no one knows exactly who put this here but that does not matter. You do not need any lockpick skill for this trunk is open and ready for the taking. And even on an early game playthrough there is still quite a few good items before you venture on into Concord. A very ominous spot north of Abernathy Farm is a few irradiated thistles. Now these things are very dangerous. Try not to go too close or have a wee sniff of them as they uh, they explode in a plume of radioactive dust. And uh, I know all of you are thinking, can I make soup from this thing? That's eh, probably ill-advised. And uh, yeah, I need to I need to stop trying to smell them. Ooh, ooh. A place I often forget about south of the Red Rocket truck stop is the Mole Rat Den. Now this uh, particular Red Rocket was renowned for their Trash Busters Award in which they were disposing of a lot of waste very effectively. They were one of the best at doing it simply because they dumped everything down here in this pit. Now let's start from this wee room over to the right. First off a fusion core, a 10mm pistol and uh, actually some 10mm rounds. Trash Busters Award can be found right here. And uh, Mr. Benson, on behalf of the Boston Regional Office, I would like to congratulate you and your team on winning the 2076 Trash Busters Award for the greatest year-to-year -year waste reduction by a single store. Respect for the environment is an integral part of corporate image. <laughs> yeah, ah, uh, you can imagine uh, how that went down. So over here, we duffel bag and a cooler. And uh, there's one final section that we must go down deep into and be sure to bring a bobby pin as it is a safe novice lock so many of you will be easy, easily able to open that. Uh, there's a wrench here, might have been the mechanics and a wee toolbox as well. Pelvis bones and other items can be found scattered out among this trash heap. Alright, let's, uh, let's carry on. We are north of Vault 111 here where we're at the Crow's Feast. It's here you can find some rat poison next to a skeleton surrounded by some crows. I don't need to tell you exactly what occurred here. You can probably be a good judge of that yourself. North of Vault 111 you can find the Dry Creek Bed. It's here that you used to be able to find a Nuka-Cola Quantum. Now it still is present. It's actually just over here underneath the ground. Now through the use of either console commands, certain patches or explosives you can gain access. In this case I'm just going to use the command TLC to go into the ground to show you that the Nuka-Cola Quantum is sitting right here safe, as, safe and sound. It actually came with some extra items that I was unaware of. There's uh, some pork and beans as well. Fancy that. Now I'm not sure why this bit of ground was put over it and it is a bit unfortunate but I do know that some versions this was not the case. But anyway, that uh, that covers the dry creek bed. Due north of Sanctuary, you can find yourself the Raider's Shack. As the name suggests, you will find a raider and his dog uh, alongside quite a lot of supplies. A chem box, cooler, ammo box, and of course, the latest victim of the raider. Not a bad find in the early game at all. 
top contender for one of the best unmarked locations is actually part of Sanctuary. It's here that you can find the hidden bunker or the root cellar. Inside we can find ourselves three gold bars, plenty of food and items for our journey. Be sure to uh, always visit here before carrying on. You can see the gold bars up here and there are two on the floor. One of mine has glitched a reload, re a reload would uh, fix that. Instamash and plenty of purified water, sugar bombs and other food stuffs as well. Some first aid that'll uh, that'll definitely help us on our journey through the Commonwealth. North of Sanctuary, you can find a Pulp Fiction reference with the uh, the dummy on the ground with the stim back through it. Uh, the mattress, of course, is actually unusable for once, but a free stim pack is definitely not one thing to uh, shake your your head at. Now, uh, one thing I love about revisiting locations is that I can bring you that that is a reference. Um, I didn't know it when I did the video uh, on its own, but now I do, so that's brilliant. Let's move on. West of the robotics disposal ground, you'll find an old firing range that's still in use with a scavenger aiming to get their, uh, their accuracy a little better. Alongside them, there's a toolbox, a weapon and several other bits of equipment that you may find useful in your next run. Very close to the old firing range and the robotics disposal ground, you can find a little stash. Here, there is a toolbox as well. As a cooler and some Marlurk meat. So uh, yeah, quite the quite the adventurous person was stashing up some food here for good reason. Hopping over, we can go over to the sunken rowboat stash, which is next. A fan favourite just north of the Red Rocket truck stop, you can find the sunken rowboat stash. Now to show you all exactly where it is, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to toggle off the water system to give you a good idea as to where it is. It's right over there. There's actually another box over there that I didn't even know existed. So we're going to find two things today. Let's delve right into the water. Ah, there we go. It has all come back. And on the boat, there is a steamer trunk. It's novice lock, but it is full of really good gear. And since we are here, we may as well go over and see what's in this box. Ah, we can create full of items. The more you know. We are just northeast of the Red Rocket truck stop at the water filtration system. Now, this little stash, you'll have to go down to the lake first, open the circuit breaker, and simply flick the switch. What that will do is allow you to gain access to a very neat stash very early on in the game. Now, let's travel all the way up here. And this lid, which we could not previously open, we can now drop in three cap stashes. Alongside this we can get some items off this little fellow here and a wee suitcase full of stuff. If you jump on top there's even more items. Radaway, Radax and Purified Water are uh, some of the other things you can find here. A brilliant starting stash. Just overlooking the Red Rocket truck stop, you can find a little overlook. This complete with a chair, an ammo box and a toolbox. Pretty handy we find to know of early on in any playthrough. Um, just to get yourself some decent items from here. We'll be moving on to find ourselves some raiders and their wee hideout. Between the Red Rocket truck stop and the robotics disposal ground, there are quite a lot of raiders, especially at this massive tree where we can find a little bit of a camp, complete with a wee guard dog, a few mattresses, and... Ah, oh, Teddy! Ah! Oh, I didn't even know they could do that! I'm learning so much in this! Uh, mole rat chunks for dinner and a wee cooler as well. From here, we'll be moving on to a wee hilltop den. Where there's a bit of a hermit raider. I don't know if he doesn't like the others, but we'll find out. South of the robotics disposal ground, you can find yourself a little hermit of a raider with his own hilltop den. Now, he's not here at the moment, but he normally passes by every so often. There's some jet and some ammo alongside a mattress if you are feeling extra brave, as well as a chem cooler that tends to have quite a lot of drugs. Speak of the devil. There they are. Now, they won't be too friendly once they see you trying to sleep on their mattress. East of the robotics disposal ground near Satellite Station Olivia, you can find a crashed vertebrate. Rule of thumb in Fallout, if there is a crashed vertebrate, there is probably power armor, especially in unmarked locations. Once you pick through the wooden crate and go into the vertebrate, 
to find yourself some more items. Hello there. I don't think you're of any need of some of this equipment, sir. I will happily take it off your hands. We ammo box and a suit of power armor with uh, presumably one of the pilots next to it. Now, this does range in your uh, your level when you enter this cell, so a lot of players leave it till way later on in hopes of grabbing some sweet, sweet higher level power armor. It's unclear what happened northwest of Satellite Station Olivia, but presumably the occupants decided to make a bit of a mass grave here, complete with a duffel bag, settlers, well, plenty of bodies of ones, um, making it a pretty good place for looting, although the local wildlife has also deemed this a pretty handy place. But the story gets even stranger as we go over here. I dubbed this one personally the Settler in the Bin, east of the robotics ground, um, just north of that massacre you seen earlier. You can find a Settler in a uh, in a bathtub, uh, dead, uh, alongside a wooden crate and a cam cooler. But inside this barrel is another Settler. We're gonna gonna see if we can get him out. Oh, you you coming out? Well, bits of him came out. I gotta love this game at times. They seem to have been trying to build a bit of a settlement in this area and obviously the occupants of the satellite station and local wildlife denied that request and slaughtered all of them. Now there is one scavenger, not a settler, who seems to have made some sort of a living out here so let's go check them. North of satellite station Livy you can find another hermit, this time a scavenger who has made a living uh, by uh, simply having a good view and some booze. Can't really fault them, especially in the nuclear wasteland here. There's uh, a wooden crate with some items as well as some of the best moonshine around. Call it an unmarked location or call it just part of Satellite Station Olivia. Either way, I feel you all need to see this. Uh, you can find a host of explosive mole rats with landmines strapped to them. Sorry. Just the one. The one poor fellow who got landmine struck to him. Uh, obviously, you know, if you shoot them, uh, that happens, as you would imagine. But be sure to raid the refrigerator before heading on towards the junkyard. Northeast of Satellite Station Levy, you can find quite a, quite a sad scene. It's clearly a woman in a dress with a lantern and a collapsed tree. Now, obviously, as the bombs fail, this whole place was pretty much eradicated, and I would say that uh, this unfortunate person may have got hit or flattened by the tree. Now, it's just a theory, but definitely somewhere worth checking out. There's also a bathtub stash nearby that I'm going to go find. If there's one thing about these locations, at least they were thorough. East of Satellite Station Olivia, you can find a lonely bathtub inside a toolbox. If you're out in the area, you may as well get yourself some items. I know some hardcore players need to know every location like myself, so I'm happy to please. Between Satellite Station Olivia and Ten Pines Bluff, you can find a rather massive junkyard. Inside, there's many dogs, but even better than that, there is an exploded safe full of caps. And if we move on over to some of the other vehicles, we can find just bits and bobs lying about. Let's see at the back of this truck. Oh, ho, ho. We have a wooden crate. Fancy that. Oh, on top of the fridge, a, a rum bottle. That'll do. Let's see if we can find anything else just whilst we're here. Oh, a first aid kit at the back of the van. That'll do. Yeah, there are uh, quite a few scatterings of items about here. Now, once you have went through all of the vehicles, be sure to go up to the top to the Overlook and we'll find even more. West of Tempin's Bluff, you can find a wee Overlook to the Junkyard full of items. Someone clearly tried to build a wee bit of a homestead here, complete with all the amenities such as coffee, wee nuka cola a wee toilet. They've also got some sugar bombs and a cooler. They were probably trying to set up a TV as well. I'd say this was maybe someone's getaway. Might have even been the junkyard's owner. Although I would imagine a few of these things were maybe moved after the war, especially as campfire. It might be very recent. All right, let's go on to an ambush site now. 
Whilst you're walking up to the junkyard in the junkyard overlook near Satellite Station Olivia, there is this tree on the right. Now it has a few markings on it that makes it a bit more distinctive, but beside it is a random encounter. On occasion I've been ambushed by Marlurks, ghouls, and in this case there are some wild mongrels. So uh, definitely be careful when you're walking up here as you never know what you could find. Just east of Thicket Excavations, there is a billboard that has a rather sad story. If we were to go to the top of it here, we can find that it actually broke apart at one stage, but jumping across, we could find something of use. Here, a short pipe revolver as well as a bullet there. Apart from all the silt beans down below, well, we might figure out what happened here. I'm imagining that collapsed as someone's weapon was sitting up there. And it appears that uh, whoever it was seemed to have crawled all the way over here. I presume this is who was patrolling up there and that was their gun. Um, I'm not too sure what this wee dugout is. I, I wouldn't imagine they dug their own grave. Maybe, you know, it was just a form of protection um, against maybe the elements. Uh, maybe some of the storms. Uh, but still, sad nonetheless. Now, let's go over a wee bit more to the east and find some more locations. Underneath the freeway, west of Ipo Simonja, is a little shack. Someone was clearly trying to make a bit of a living in this hellscape. And there are some potatoes in the sink. As well as some ammunition. Now, once you clear out the shack of all items that you can find, be sure to head round to the back and due north to find their outhouse with a uh, quite a ironic scene. Inside, you can find the settler dead with a day tripper and several other cams nearby but behind watching very closely from the corner is possibly a synth no it wasn't but it could have been and you cannot be too careful due west of Iposamonja you can find access to the freeway via these two containers that have collapsed um, clearly they were carrying some washing machines now once we get to the top we can find a raider who has quite a few items as well as a cam box beside him and with that we can freely explore the freeway going north and south as far as we can go there may be some items in the car so be sure to always have a double look between Ten Pines Bluff and Ipo Simonja, there is an unmarked location, this little house. Now, it ranges from everything. I have found bodies of dead gunners, such as this, uh, with some feral ghouls just lurking about. Sometimes they're engaged with raiders, sometimes there's nothing here. It just all depends. It seems, uh, it seems the gunner and ghouls is uh, a very common appearance, but from here we'll be heading on to a military train that is derailed but there's some valuable cargo when you're coming down the hills from ten pines bluff be sure to check out this derailed train it's got a few items scattered about but it was carrying very valuable cargo and it's over here in this armor cage that you can find it so it has a power armor suit and as you know the drill there is a wee red wire going all the way into this blue carriage Connected to an advanced lock terminal. If you're fortunate enough to be able to get this early on, it's a good place to find some power armor without too much engagement. There may be ghouls or gunners in the area, uh, but there's ghouls and gunners in nearly every area in this game. From here, we'll be heading on to the bridge. This proved a really popular unmarked location just southeast of Ten Pines Bluff. You can find the Crow's Bridge. Now, I dubbed it that because the crows seem to always find their way back to the bridge so we've kind of scared them away let's just sit back and they eventually just return bit ominous not too sure why but maybe it's because they always know there's a, a bit of a bit of death down below on these train tracks as there are quite a lot of raiders ghouls and other nasties going up and down here but still a cool piece of environmental storytelling for sure I dubbed this one south of Ten Pines Bluff, Ten Pines Relief. Now, it's a bit of environmental storytelling as opposed to an actual location. And one could argue it is actually just part of Ten Pines Bluff. But this sign, when you're along the uh, the railway line, has uh, some items. Radaway and dirty water. Now, in a lot of my playthroughs, I was totally unaware of this. But going to each of the signs, you will find more and more items. A stim pack... 
you know, even hub flowers, plenty of uh, flora to to harvest. And as you continue all the way up, well, of course, you will reach Ten Pines Bluff. How did I stray from the path? Ah, there they are. Yeah, so you just keep following the signs and you keep finding items. Well, two items. But if you're in the area and you weren't aware of that, maybe you only fast travel in and out from Ten Pines. It is something to definitely note. Uh, pretty cool and um, something I just wanted to share in this series. And now we'll be heading on to find a few more stashes. Standing proud over the hills of Concord are these three residential houses. I imagine this would have been a more out of the way secluded place. Now unfortunately they are all boarded up and inaccessible but at the rear we can find ourselves some wild mutt fruit just uh, around the place and a brahmin alongside a dead raider. Now he's always dead so it's a good source of some starting gear as well as some ammunition, rad roach meat and a combat knife. Now there are a few more buildings in Concord that we're going to have a wee look at. As you enter the town of Concord from the Red Rocket truck stop, be sure to stop by this little open house. For you see, early on you'll be able to open the safe as it's only a novice lock. The suitcase normally has a bobby pin on it so you can try your luck if you're in the area. As well as some first aid, food left over in the kitchen for us, some cereal and a cap stash before moving on our way further into Concord itself. When you first enter the town of Concord from the Red Rocket truck stop, you may come across this little house. Inside, there is a very unique feature. It always has a Nuka-Cola Quantum in the fridge. Probably the first that many players will see when they start a new game. There's a cap stash and some sugar bombs up top, but it is on the second floor where things get quite interesting. We've got a chem box as well as plenty of items for your little dog meat that may be coming with you. There is also a safe of an advanced lock and conveniently some bobby pins for you to open it. Continuing on into the town of Concord itself, we can find quite a lot of unmarked locations. This is the Walden Drug Store. You can see the sign weathered by many years in the uh, post-apocalyptic world. And inside there isn't too much except the first aid kit on the first floor which you can go over and loot, but a keen eye upstairs will see there is an expert locked wall safe. Behind that, a toolbox alongside an ammunition box. Now, let's go across the street and into our next destination, which is the Rights Inn. Now, is it related to Piper? We're not entirely sure. High possibility, but one thing I do like about it is it's got a bit of character to it. There's a chem cooler and a cap stash on the first floor. And as we move on to the second, one might think we'll come across a wall safe. Unfortunately, this place has been completely stripped out over the years and there is not much worth taking. But that being said, if you go just around the corner here, the, the workhouse, this rather large building here, with uh, the wee lantern outside, we can get ourselves a very ironic skeleton scene. Now, they are just upstairs and uh, we're going to go... I'm going to go to the first level here. Now, I, my theory is that a generator of some kind had exploded up through the floors and that is why this building is so devastated. Now, what you're seeing here is me exploring uh, the first floor. There's actually nothing on a bar a desk or two. Uh, it's the next level up that we're going to find a skeleton with a wee baby, baby rattle and a duffel bag. You have to do a wee bit of a parkour over to it. That shouldn't be too much of a hassle. To many of you experts out there, jump right across there we go. And what we can find is uh, the duffel bag normally full of uh, pretty decent items. Uh, there's no enemies in here, so it's uh, pretty good. There's a wee killer box as well. And as we jump right back across, and I fail that miserably, we can go right to the top where there seems to be a wee bit of a scuffle going on, a bit of a fight between presumably the owner and an employee. You can be the judge of who is who in this case. Although I notice the employee or whoever's being held down isn't wearing any clothes. Yeah, we'll leave that theory open for you. There is an advanced lock safe for you to take a wee look at. And uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much covering the workhouse in terms of uh, good items. You can check uh, across the floor here. I don't believe there's anything too valuable across there. Nah, nothing. Nothing of note, but what we can do 
is we can either go to the roof and exit from there. Um, you can go across a few rooftops, maybe giving you a bit of an advantage over the raiders in Concord. Now, after doing that, we can go all the way to the bottom where we're going to exit out and go towards the Concord Speak Easy. This place is uh, quite unique. It's uh, got a few, again, <laughs> skeletons and uh, corpses with some funny scenes that uh, so even some veterans maybe haven't seen before. Uh, because the assumption is a lot of Concord is pretty much empty. But that is, in fact, not the case. So, passing by this Pawalski shelter, you can find the rear of the speakeasy with some candles outside. Now, you can enter from the other, but there are quite a number of raiders. So, I'm showing you kind of the easier route. Especially if you just want to nip in, get some items, and move on quite quickly. The place is pretty devastated, but there is an advanced lock safe, several beer bottles sitting about, and uh, downstairs where you can find a lot of toolboxes and equipment for your settlement building, economy wonder glue, and uh, another toolbox in the corner. Nipping back up to the first level, we can find a skeleton sitting on a chair. This one has a cigar and a beer bottle. He went out the way he wanted to go out. That is respectful. I'm sure they were all getting drunk in the midst of it all and just were like, listen, world's gonna end. In here, we can find a steamer trunk. I believe that door is locked, but uh, once you get back, steamer trunk, ammo, and the soldier who was holed up here with his 10 millimeter. And uh, if we go into this bedroom, I believe there's, there's nothing in this one, but where do you see the, uh, the other one where we get a, a really incredible scene? There is a skeleton land here with some excels next to them, as well as uh, the arms around a mannequin. Yep, I'll leave you to be the judge of that. But in here's where it gets weirder. Several mannequins with machetes round a skeleton whose skull is in the toilet. Was this a really sick prank? Or it's, it's hard to tell. There are some day tripper drugs though, uh, because you know, you gotta, <laughs> you gotta pass the time somehow. Whether that all happened after the bombs fell, it's hard to tell. But as of right now, the place is just crawling with raiders, so of course there isn't all that much going on. Now, what we can do is we can actually go across the road here to the hardware store. Now, this place, again, heavily guarded by raiders, has we stash on the roof. But there are plenty of items for you to loot on the ground floor itself. Uh, from cans, duct tape all the way to uh, plungers and used oil cans for settlement building or just crafting. Pretty useful. Now, out the front, there's a wee Mr. Handy box. I must have got that in just before everything went to hell. Maybe it was Codsworth. You never know. Uh, there are some fuses here and light bulbs. Again, all great things for uh, crafting and settlement building. Right. Up to the top, let's find ourselves a little stash of cams. There we go. Beer bottle and a cam box. Right, now we're going to jump over to the Concord Church. Not because the service is being held, uh, because there's actually a stash upstairs. And with many churches, you've always got to go up. There's usually a safe. Highly recommend you always have a wee look here. And uh, make sure you, you cover all bases. Now it is an expert lock. Kind of like the wall safe there. Uh, back in Walden Drugs. Now the thing about that is early on, not many of us are going to be opening uh, that anytime soon. But... What I'm going to show you is the Concord Civic Access, where the Deathclaw emerges um, later on. You can actually access it before that from two places. One is that there, a wee toolbox we just passed. Second entrance is there, the obviously the Deathclaw emerging from there. And then we have the third entrance to the Civic Access, which is just over here, behind the Pawalski Shelter, easy enough to find. And uh, we'll actually be entering it uh, in a wee second here after I see if there was anything in the shelter. Let's go in. Okay, so we are in from that entrance of the Pawalski shelter. There are plenty of items to find. A lot hidden, you know, there's, there's quite a few things I'm sure even veterans haven't uh, seen in a while. We steamer trunk in this room alongside plenty of other items and tin cans and whatnot. Now, upon accident, you can find a wee Marlurk, a wee local resident, some chems up there, jet and a chem box. Now, over here is where things get interesting, a fusion core and a vault tech lunchbox. Oh, Mr. Handy model. I love them. Really, I actually want to buy one of the ones in real life. Okay, over onto the pipe here, and under it, we can find a locked wooden box alongside a skeleton with no head. I don't know where his head is. Um, 
Yeah, I'm sure he had bigger problems anyway. Okay, so jumping out here, we're going to go back up to the catwalk here. Now, this is leading on to the other entrance, the one that you've seen in the other alleyway. But this we've seen of a skeleton sitting with the sugar bombs and a wooden spoon is uh, quite wholesome, to say the least. So yeah, going up there to the left is um, the way up to the alleyway. We're going to continue, though. The Death Claw is not down here. It's scripted to appear as you finish the mission in the Museum of Freedom. But there are signs of him being here. That's actually his nest in there. We are going to go in and visit. He isn't there. I did think he was going to be a bit of a jump scare or something if I broke the game like this. But upon going in that direction, we must go into this wee room to the right here, as I just remember. And uh, explore everything. There's first aid. There's a vault tech lunchbox. Oh, Danny Boy Apples few skeletons that got uh, buried and behind the door a wee hidden toolbox easy to miss but yeah plenty of good stuff for the taking now this door is chained not to worry though we're gonna bounce in a wee command and we're gonna fly straight through um you can take the chain off well obviously yeah uh, you'd be taking it off if you came from the death claw now you can see he's uh, been holed up here but he, he's not about at the moment unsure as to where he is um obviously he is just scripted so that's just the way that goes now, let's, uh, let's exit out of no fly and go out. Now, this is where you'd be entering from the Deathclaw emerging after you defeat him. If you wanted to. I never ever thought to go down and explore my first playthrough. Uh, this place was all relatively new to me. Um, let's see. Going out here. Yep. So, he just kind of bounces out from uh, these two plates here. Uh Cool wee location. I did originally think the sewers were kind of like New Vegas where there'd be a maze, but that one quite easy to navigate and a lot of fantastic items for the taking. So let's uh, let's move on then. A building suggested to me by a subscriber north of the Museum of Freedom. I nearly missed this one. So when you're on your way to Thicket or Bedford, always stop by as there is a very valuable raider upstairs and you don't have to fight him. There's a cam box, as well as food in the fridge, bobby pins, and sugar bombs. Be sure to grab the bobby pins, we're about to need them. Up here, you can find a raider dead. Now, he's always dead by default, so easy first weapons for you. A uh, rifle beside him, cap stash, and as I mentioned about the bobby pins, there's a safe. But this one's a novice lock, so for beginners, it is uh, should be easy enough for you. Before moving on to the next place. Just east of the Museum of Freedom, there is the Concord Campfire. Now, this location is rife with random encounters. It's actually quite quiet for me at the moment. But if you go over to the edge here, what you will always find is several settlers, a wooden crate, and a wee cooler for the taken. But there's also a first aid kit that sometimes, when you approach, you mightn't see straight off. Now, let's go get a wee shopping cart of goodies. Also, due east of the Museum of Freedom is the shopping cart of goodies. This here is a Nuka-Cola cherry, Nuka-Cola, and plenty of other food items. If you're doing a survival playthrough, this is a perfect spot to drop by. Directly north of the Starlight Drive-In, south of Thicket, you can find yourself a little Rad Roach outhouse. And, as the name would suggest, there are indeed some rad roaches that will appear once you approach this location. But for your efforts, you will get a first aid kit as well as several other items before moving on. Due west of Bedford Station is the cooking spot, another location rife with random encounters. A little trip down memory lane, my first ever encounter playing Fallout 4, I came across this place. There was many ghouls that proceeded to completely wipe me out. In this case, there is just a settler sitting cooking a nice meal. Hopefully, we can get some supper before we go on to our next location. On your travels to Bedford Station, you may come across this little trailer where someone was clearly homesteading in the middle of the forest, on top an actual trailer bed. Uh, there's some toolboxes and uh, several other items within. There may, of course, be some boat flies that you may have to... Blot flies, I always get that wrong. Blot flies that you may also have to deal with. Now, after you raid anything useful from here, is that a wee toolbox and ammo? It is indeed. There we go. You learn something new every day, even doing these locations. Let's go on to the next one. On to another location. This one just south of Thicket Excavations. This is what I dub the half a bus, because there's only half a bus. But inside there is a first aid kit, so anyone passing by from Concord, definitely pop in. Usually a few good items in it, so uh, definitely worth 
the visit, that's for sure. Okay, on to our next stop. Not too far away, beside the Museum of Freedom, you can find a collapsed shed with a wee toolbox for the taken. There appears to be some bones, so I would imagine the shed might have actually collapsed around this poor fellow. Uh, it's just an assumption. Maybe it was before the bombs fell? Huh, maybe it might have been after. Shoddy construction work. Alright, so this is quite a unique location. This is just north of the Drumlin Diner near the Museum of Freedom. It's a blown open safe with some ammo boxes and as we all know, ammo is a very valuable commodity in Fallout 4, bathtub not included. And uh, yeah, I always stop by here in any run just to get some nice ammo. Um, it does respawn, so a uh, good place to have if you're in the area. I take it from the toilet and the tires and the bathtub, someone was maybe trying to set up shop here. You'll never know. Okay, so there's a fresh camp between the Gorski cabin and the Drumlin diner. This, I believe, belongs to the, t the crew that are currently at the diner harassing uh, that lady over here. But whilst they're there, we can take all the stuff from their toolbox and they have some bourbon and buff out just the, the general thug uh, amount of items. Now, from here, we have uh, quite a quick and easy journey. That is towards the Drumlin Diner, but if we go left here towards this billboard, ah, oh, there's a trader. Not usually we see a, a trader about here. Who's this one? Ah, oh, none other than Trash Can Carla. Hello. Right, so onto the billboard. We're going to climb this tree to get up to the stash. Now, whoever left it here is no longer defending it. So uh, I, I'm, I love all the hops. I made that seem difficult. Right, there's some first aid, a wee ammo box, as well as a mattress you could sleep on, and a wee cooler at the end. Decent wee items early on. Not many enemies about. Good place to start. All right. On to this one beside the Drumlin Diner. This is, in fact, the Drumlin Ponds. Uh, it has a few items scattered about, namely this uh, little toolbox that hides behind the diner. Now, once you get all the items from that and the wee empty box beside it, we can go over and it's probably one of the, the tiniest stashes I've seen in a long time. It's a few cans of aluminum or aluminium and some rat away uh, against some of these barrels. I did think there was something in the barrels, but... As for this pond, I'm going to drain the water away just to show you what's happening. Something's going on with that bathtub over here, so we're going to investigate. Taking it away again, this guy appears to have uh, either died in the tub or was attached to a tire and sunk to the bottom. Although, I think rubber floats, so I'm not too sure what happened there, but theories are welcome in the comments. Alright, now, let's see. On to our next one, south of the Drumlin Diner. This is, in fact, the... Uh, van the machine car transport. Now, there is a wee port of diners. Come on, give us a wee bit of luck for this hour long video special. No, no, there isn't. Right, on to the Nuka Cola machine. Uh, can we hit it any? Oh my goodness. Yes, the things you love to see. Two cherries, Nuka Cola Quantum, and uh, a normal Nuka Cola. I, you can't be bad to that. Ice cooler has a plastic bowl in it. Hey, I'll take it. Port of diner, still useless. Bop. Oh, there's a wee venom machine actually up behind the Nuka Cola machine. I, w I wonder is that all the time? I must I must do a wee play test. I don't actually know. I don't know if it was luck or whether it was uh, just handiness. Now over here is the Walden military pillbox. Now again between Walden Pond, of course, and the Drumlin Diner. We can venture on inside. We I bought chilling about. But if you can crack the novice terminal here, you can get into the back to get a wee. I think it's an explosives box, or might not be, but there's a wee giddy up uh, horse in there as well as the soldier who was unfortunately locked in here. Wee ammo box for your troubles, and there might be a Mr. Gutsy about, um, or Mr. Uh, Mr. Handy, I can't, can't remember, I think I let him out. But anyway, we can, uh, we can move on after patriotically looking at the flag. Okay, this is south of the Walden Pond. It is the settler tent. Now, a lot of you were telling me that uh, you actually found the settler here. It might be a random encounter for me and the several times I've been here. They're not here, but it is a place to at least keep in mind when you're in the area in case you can run into them and uh, see if they're of any use to you. It's, it's a strange thing that it's not in my game, but look, these things happen. And uh, the, next la the next place we'll be going on to is a chem laboratory so that should be uh, quite interesting between Walden Pond and the Gorski cabin you can find the Raider chem lab 
Now, the Raiders here are rather bored, and they're not actually cooking at the moment. What they are doing is taking pot shots at that poor settler slash mannequin attached to that tree. We'll have a wee look at that in a second. Be sure to get all the items out of their wooden crate before going down, and you can make use of their chemistry lab. You just have to take care of the two Raiders first before you can do that. Now, let's go over to the horrific site that is this. They apparently were tying up and shooting settlers and mannequins whilst, uh, oh, they're trying to take shots at me at the moment. See, these are the cool little environmental things that you don't see um, unless you've got a scope or you're being very sneaky. Uh, but a really cool interaction from the Raiders, certainly. Right. We're actually east of Walden Pond, possibly one of my favourite locations in the game. This is the Cat Fanatic. He has many cats, many photos of cats, and he's a decent trader early on in the game. Now, these little kitties, but you can't pet them or anything. But what we can do is we can go inside, cat bulls, we've got more cat bulls, more cats, locker. He doesn't actually have too many, you know, things in the way of items around the place. He's more so just useful as a trader. Um, I'm sure there's some evil people come along, kill all the cats and the trader, but um, yeah, oh, there's a bit of bones in the kennel wonder what happened there. Now there is an awfully sad scene to the right here. There's graves. Now I didn't do it when I did this video so this is never before seen on the channel in terms of a video. He had cat graves because they're definitely too big to be you know a person. That's so sad. You get an A plus for that. That's ah oh, that's some seriously heart twinging things. Right so there's a gunner camp here um, that we're going to head over to. So Go north of the uh, Rocky Narrows Park. Uh, it's very close to uh, Walden Pond. There's three locations here, but I'm going to wrap them all up into just one go over. So, first things first is the bus ramp leading up from the south side. Defended by a turret and several uh, gunners. There is an explosive crate at this side that you can, uh, you can indulge in, and I highly recommend you do. Right, running on. The main camp itself is actually pretty sparse. There is obviously the massive windmill, so you'd think this was some, you know, maybe a foundation for a much bigger settlement. But the main items in here, a few foot lockers at the end of the bus, turret on top, and uh, you can walk all the way along um, if you want, but uh, there isn't too much in the way of items on this section. Now, running across this bit, there's a really interesting interaction that can happen here. Uh, there is some wooden boards that I'm going to show you here to the right that are broke. A lot of the times one of the gunners will walk over it, it will snap and they will fall to their death. You will too if you decide to walk over them. Always use the ones on the right um, and you will be safe. So yeah, many a times he's, he's land dead so it cuts one gunner out of the equation. Um, I, I think the gunners have actually respawned on this one for me. Uh, so that's why there isn't a body at the bottom. Now this is heavily defended. Three gunners and a wooden crate. Unfortunately this one isn't full of any uh, valuable explosives. But still it's uh, worth taking out to get some equipment. Normally they're fighting ghouls or another random encounter in this area. So it's a, it's a pretty neat place to know. Um, but that covers pretty much all the gunner encampments on this part of the freeway. There'll be plenty more of those in the future. Right. Okay, so we're much further westward near Wicked Shipping Fleet Lockup, uh, just near the lake. Now, th there's this expansive car park um, that you can go to. There's a large toolbox in the back of, well, what's left of a van. A few radioactive barrels. This was probably a nice holiday destination. Now, there is actually a few places along this route. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to blitz through them. Um, we can have we look. Uh, run along here. You might find wee scraps here and there. Plenty of, you know blood leaf plenty of other items just just scattered uh but first up we have the uh the raiders perch it's normally again another random encounter where a gang of raiders tend to set up right here at this house um so on occasion you may be shot at if you come even close now you can see oh we have a tub full of nothing usual we say jumping over across there's actually a we a funny house now as you know the bombs fail during Halloween and that's why there's so many Halloween decorations and everything sitting up. This house has uh, a few mannequins sitting about and a wee Halloween pumpkin. You can find plenty of items just scattered about but it's what's out the back is the most intriguing thing. 
I don't think I'm going to look at it straight away. I was so interested in the Danny Boy apples you could find on the mattress. Now, if we do jump over and across here, passing by, we can find a safe and what appears to be some fencing. Someone was going to turn this into maybe a wee bit of a defensible position. Maybe it was the Raiders. Maybe it was Settlers. Those poor Settlers. They never seem to catch a break. Right, well, now we'll be continuing further south towards uh, Sunshine Tidings Co-op and the Lonely Chapel to continue the rest of these locations. Let's go. All right, so we're closer to Sunshine Co Tidings Co-op at this stage um, at what I dub the Radroach Tent. Inside, you can find a raider, a mongrel, and when you get close, many radroaches. I'm assuming they are what took out the raider and the mongrel. Bit strange to see them both uh, lose the rad roaches but here maybe they were maybe it was a legendary one and he's no longer about that could be a possibility um that i could uh, i could definitely see happening now running across here there is sunshine bar i've been informed that this isn't actually the uh, the point of interest here this is a random occurrence and the owner of the bar occasionally dies this is in fact what is always here which is a large toolbox at the back of uh, a vault tech van or just a normal van don't know where it was going though. There's not much road here except this big pipe. Uh, it was speculation that was DLC for a long time until obviously Nuka World came out. But the bar unstocked and unmanned because he tends to just die in the wasteland before he makes it to the bar. I think he must spawn at a certain point and walk to it. Uh, don't know why that's the case. Don't know why we'd have just spawned with the bar. Would have made a wee bit more sense. But uh, I I digress. Let's. Uh, Let's carry on because there's plenty of things like a Yaogwai cave coming up soon. East of the Lonely Chapel, you can find a elevator heavily guarded by some gunners. Now, once you clear them all out and get on board, we can uh, head on up and see what sort of setup they have. We can do a wee bit of raiding their crib. Now, this place is crawling with gunners, so there will be a plenty of fighting on your hand. Uh, there is a weapons workbench, trunk, and plenty of other items uh, for the taking after you've raided all of them and seen how many headshots they've served ah, that's that's not a bad number for for play guy for play we can head on to the end of the bridge where we're going to find ourselves a would-be bank robber using the lift up to the gunner's den south of the lonely chapel on the freeway you can find a bank robber with a sub snub-nosed .44 pistol and a dress so it was a female Duffel bag full of money, but wait, there's even more. There's a safe that's already open and full of really good items. Now, of course, you do have to get through all the gunners to get here, but I would say it is a worthy reward that many of you mightn't have even known was here. Below the bank robber, south of the Lonely Chapel, is a very dangerous location with a very high-level enemy. This is the Yaogwai Cave. He is slumbering, but don't be mistaken. Once you come very close, he will be very active, uh, especially towards this Radstag. But if you just jump below the ledge and you don't realize what danger you're in and you manage to somehow kill him, you can uh, take all the spoils here from the raider that he has dragged in and a brahmin. Uh, there are skeletons of his other victims, so clearly he's been very active in the area. And there's also some wild tato blossoms that we can pick from before venturing onward. This little location south of the Drumlin Diner is called the Walden Homestead, although maybe I should have called it the Drumlin Homestead. Anyway, it's uh, usually a random encounter location where you can find all sorts. There's been raiders, I've found quite, quite a number of people in here. Um, in this case, and for quite a few of the places, it's a little random, so I haven't found anyone, but... There is first aid kit and a few other items before we move on to a fan favorite everyone loves the old wicked shipping fleet uh, trailers that you can find scattered about now you can of course unlock it if you want to uh, with the master lock or you can uh, use the the key that you can find at the wicked shipping fleet lock i'm just going to use this uh, for expediency inside you can find a steamer trunk normally full of really good gear and uh, a lone skeleton. Now, with the pipe pistol, you can kind of tell how he decided to go out. Was he trapped in the trailer? Well, uh, quite possibly. Possibly he didn't want to endure what this world had become, or he just couldn't get out. Either or, he's not alive, but what there is just around the corner here 
is the uh, another military train. Now, this one has some goodies that we're going to be taking, provided you're pretty good at uh, using a computer. Another suit of power armor. Nice. That's actually two on this line we've found so far. An advanced terminal and uh, a wee wooden crate at the back, as well as the power armor itself. So, a uh, decent wee pickup. Anything in the trailer to its right. Uh, a few barricades they were going to use to set up. Um, not much else. Just supplies. Ooh. Ammo. Not a bad find. All right. On to our next location. A somewhat hidden sewer entrance west of the Super Duper Mart, you can find the switchboard entrance. Now, once you get inside, you'll be greeted by a wee open door into the sewer. And no lock picking required, but there is a bit more involved when you get to this door. You see, in order to gain access, we have to unlock a master terminal or have the key for this part of the, the quest line. Um, there is a quest involved in this uh, that makes it easier, or if you come across it beforehand, a master lock is the only way. Now, let's pretend that uh, we already did that, and what we're going to do is we're simply going to, to cruise into the... Nope, we're not just yet. Now we are. We're going to cruise through the door. Inside you'll find we railroad insignias as well as uh, quite a few bodies lying around and turrets. Uh, if we follow on the path, we'll find many a named character. Roger up there, we have Maven and many turrets. Obviously, something has occurred here that uh, obviously didn't go too well with all of the uh, the railroad users. Rad Scorpions as well as Sly Nicholas can be found here. Um, with all the named characters, it kind of builds up the suspense that something has went seriously wrong in this facility. Now, you may not be surprised what enemies we are just about to encounter. Let's see. Oh, another one with a terminal. This one here is actually Mr. Mathers. Right. We're getting a wee bit deeper and a bit closer. Kelly K as well. More rad scorpions. You might think it was the rad scorpions that did it, but, you know, I'm sure the railroad can take care of them. I would say this enemy was a whole lot more formidable. Okay, getting up here to another terminal novice lock once you unlock it we'll be able to get inside to none other than the special united states of america uh, like an intel agency building um there's since walking about i'm gonna make it a bit more authentic so we'll take the no collision off as we look around songbird can be found here as well as we camp in here now the synths are completely crawling about the place and you will of course have to engage every one of them but a fusion core in here is definitely worth a pickup. Right, let's head on up into the main office area that we can uh, go into. Be sure to have we look on the desk where you'll find a US Covert Operations Manual. A pretty fitting place, wouldn't you say? A central terminal you'll need to uh, unlock the door and uh, as well as this terminal. Uh, once you deal with all the, uh, the traps, I'm just going to hop over them. I can just parkour this. Boom. Over to the right are some toilets. Not much uh, in the way of goodies in any of them. Uh, I think this storage, uh, it's an advanced locked door. I'll open it here. Just, uh, I know many of you love the, the completionist side of this. So, let's see. I think it's just a few. Yep, we duffel bag full of items and a toolbox. Anything behind the door? Always got to check. Right, on to the left section where things certainly get more interesting. More synths to deal with. And uh, several items carting about the place. Bobby pins, not, not a bad pickup, right? Oh, he just decided to push me out of the way. All right. Carrying on. Now, this is not the main area. This is actually just the uh, R&D department. Oh, no, it is. Where they're trying to unlock this security door. Now, again, the terminal's inaccessible. I really shouldn't be here as we are not doing the quest line. But there's bottle kit mines. Uh, gas masks, hazmat suits, wee weapons workbench, as well as a steamer trunk and plenty of other gear. I actually think the synth, is he, he's the synth leader, so he's the one you really gotta deal with. But, let's just say, we went on into the terminal, oh, if we click off that and uh, go into the place anyway. We can find Tommy Whisper sitting over here, he normally carries a, a good few items. 
Uh, there's also a request item in here as well. I wonder did I pick it up? Well, you can also pick up a mini nuke and some stealth boys and the Carrington's prototype, which is main thing we were looking for. Right, excellent back out into the main part. There's a few more rooms that we can discover before we come up to our final location, dropping us actually in the center of uh, Lexington, if you can believe it. Uh, you can unlock some of the doors here. There's uh, extra items just behind them all as you uh, as you open and read through the terminal entries. Oh, trunk as well. All right, as we've uh, covered through here, oh, there's mines. There's lots of mines. It's a very dangerous spot. Uh, let's see. We getting out of here? We are certainly about to. Uh, you can go in here through an advanced security gate. A few more items that can be picked up in there. And the final person is Beatrice Bell before we make it to the terminal to use the elevator. So let's uh, let's mosey on out of here, shall we? Okay, so we've just exited out of uh, the bunker there, the switchboard, and uh, opened a wee bookcase into maybe a familiar place to some players that might have known this existed. Let's go right into the Commonwealth and see where exactly we are. Well, I can give you a quick hint. We're actually in Lexington because the switchboard entrance was just outside and uh, the wee secret entrance comes into this little location right here. This is in fact da -da -da -da, the Slocum Joe's in Lexington. Oh, I decided to go the wrong way. Plenty of items in here for the taking camp stashes. Uh, I, I recommend you would visit this place whether or not you go into the switchboard. Uh, we're uh, right here. And from here, I've got several great locations in Lexington unmarked that we are going to have a look at. First up is, of course, the Red Rocket. I'm sure many of you have called this place home at one stage or another. It's not a settlement, but it always comes with a lot of the amenities that you would find at home. Like a power armor station. And a weapons workbench, as well as several other pieces of equipment. There's also this right here. This is the Faded Glory laundromat that we're going to nip into. Right, so now that we're inside the laundromat, it comes with a very unique find. A wee teddy bear, a wee person just sitting, chilling. One of the dryers is not like the other, the one with the soap on it. This has a complete skeleton. Why is it in here? I'm not too sure. I'm sure you can make some pretty horrific guesses. I love the employees only section. Is like the tiniest wee office with a first aid kit and a filing cabinet. It just, ah, it's so, it's so fitting. Um, there's also someone here that was drowning out their sorrows at the time with a bottle of whiskey. And a wee overdue book. Not a bad few things to grab. A few Abraxo cleaners. I'm sure many of you need that for crafting. Uh, so we'll exit back out and see what other places we can find in Lexington. A favourite location of mine right beside the Super Duper Mart. You need a wee refresh as to where we are just in the middle of Lexington. Is this bank. Now it seems not much is going on here. There's a few cash registers that has quite a lot of pre-war money. But this door will be closed and you can use this terminal to open it. No hacking required. But then you find a skeleton leaning out. And then at the bottom, a duffel bag with 100 pre-war money. Probably one of the most amounts that you'll find in the game. And, of course, incredibly useful. And this appears to be the getaway vehicle and her partner. Now, whether she was working for the bank or they just blew the charges as the bombs fell, it's very bad timing on their part. And it's a shame. This operation looks like it was near enough a success until it just wasn't. And with that, there are plenty of feral ghouls in the area that you'll have to contend with. So let's go on and find our next unmarked location. Right beside the Lexington Bank and south of the Super Duper Mart, you can find this uh, seemingly empty office building. A skeletal structure of its former self. Everything kind of scattered everywhere. Now you can check most of the floors and you won't find all that much. Even if you go to the top. But... What if I told you, barring the armor workbench, there is actually something that really should catch your eye. It was actually on the bottom level. I didn't forget, I just wanted to show you the rest of the building. Because I have never seen this terminal before. And I've been through here many a time. Many, many times. But it unlocks this. Now it's an advanced lock terminal, I had already opened it. But there's an advanced lock safe and some pre-war money. Now, will this be one... Similar to the likes of the uh, the bank robbery, or is it just a normal safe? It's just a normal one, still plenty of pre-war money to be found. Uh, be sure to pick that up alongside the ammunition. 
Uh, the dead raider behind here, who must be making the last stand, and some first aid. Uh, you'll certainly need it when you're clearing through all the ghouls in this space. Another jetpack only location west of Lexington near the Corvega assembly plant. Possibly a, an employee from there, because there's plenty of steel here. Steel, rubber, dirty water, and some food. Now, who or what was living up here is uh, is very unclear. There is no accessible accessible route up here that I can see especially onto the roof so whoever made it up here made sure that no one else was joining them um anytime soon don't see a ladder don't see anything which is actually quite spectacular but given that it's still a really interesting stash that I'd never seen before so I wanted to include it right what more can Lexington offer us Hardware stores are a great source of useful tools, especially this one in Lexington, similar to its Concord, oh, hello, Concord uh, <laughs> equivalent. We can find some uh, raiders, items, toolboxes, and of course, ghouls. Now, it's not all that large, and there's a wee trike out the back, uh, but it's still definitely worth stopping by as the door, yep, you can even open the door. Don't know why you'd need to, the giant open hole in the side of the place seems to seems to be everything you need uh, but do be careful with the large ghoul population right time to go up to this catwalk as you know the ghouls and raiders vie for control in lexington this rather large building in the middle uh best toured via a uh, fly command here uh, i can show you all the different entrances so first up on its uh, northern side you can access yeah, the stairwell, which will bring you up to this level here, where you'll find several ghouls uh, chilling about. Now, as you continue up the stairwell to the next level, you'll find ghouls and raiders, obviously, fighting uh, about with one another. There's a duffel bag, normally full of decent items, as well as a cooler on this catwalk. Cam box also included, um, as well as this raider here. Now, to zoom out to give you a bigger picture, uh, where this truck has collapsed with the turret, there is uh, another way to access this place uh, through the back alleyway. This is actually just behind the hardware store um, that we were looking at, and uh, you can access it that way. But yes, plenty, uh, plenty of things going on uh, within this building. If you go to the upper levels, there isn't too much in terms of items, but on the middle, you can find at the rear a chemistry station. Okay, so that's that building cleared. Let's, uh, let's move on. Another wee location in Lexington is the Liqueurs store. Now, there's nothing on the first floor. It's been completely devastated. That means we have to uh, parkour our way up to the second level. Requires a few jumps to get right. But once you're up here, you can find a few bottles of vodka and an office desk alongside a cooler and a Vault Tech lunchbox. These two colleagues... Uh, presumably uh, decided that uh, some vodka would help take away the, uh, you know, the searing pain of the uh, atomic war that just took place. Eh, I suppose it's one way to go about it. But, uh, yeah, there's plenty of other things like this in Lexington, so let's continue. Often in Fallout, you get somber sights. This one south of Lexington, north of the Corvega assembly plant, is no exception. A little, probably a brand new family who uh, welcomed their little ones into the world. You can see by the cut in the room, as well as a wee basketball, a Nuka cola toy truck, and a tricycle that, uh, you know, it's it's just a very, very somber scene, you know, of amidst empty milk bottles, you know, it, they've got all the right items about here, and with the beer bottles, perhaps the parent was, a, was maybe, a, you know, a heavy drinker, one of them, if there was more than one, um... There's just, there's so many beer bottles alongside, you know, empty milk bottles and toys. It's, it's one of those, when you really take it in, you know, it's painting maybe a bit of a, a sadder side, especially deep within, you know, the sort of hustle and bustle of this city and massive looming structures. And this was just happening down in a quiet wee corner. Uh, yeah, one of them are marked ones that really, really make you think. Right. Let's go engage some raiders, shall we? 
Deeper into Lexington, closer to the apartment buildings, you can find a little pharmacy. Now, the sign for it's actually on the roof, but usually you don't actually see that. But the drugs here is a good sign that this place is ripe for pillaging. Now, my thoughts on it is this is pretty much what it was pre-war. I would have preferred the door to be locked because then that would have made more sense once you got in. Yeah, there's some first aid and there are plenty of meds scattered about. This guy's actually hugging a bottle of Radex, for example. This guy on the, uh, must have been his wheelchair there, he's got a walking cane and a stim pack above him. Now if we go behind, see if we can get any better loot here. We've got a medical nitrogen dispenser, pretty good for crafting, Boston Bugle, and this one over here is holding Medex. Ah. As well as Jap and cigarettes, because you got to have cigarettes in a pharmacy. It just makes sense. Right. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to go round the corner to the next unmarked location within Lexington. Now, this is the bus station. Wow, it's actually taking a wee bit longer to load than usual. Good thing my commentary pulls through. Right, straight round the corner here, you can find the bus station on your right. Now, in terms of notable items, there isn't too much, but across the way here, you can find a skeleton with some army fatigues. Now, I've reloaded a few times, it seems to be quite consistent, so maybe this was a veteran escaping or a way to serve his country. Inside, there are several more suitcases, and if you're lucky, there might be some items uh, scattered about within the bathroom, or we can go the whole way back to the office. I feel this place was kind of forgotten about. It looks like it was going to be furnished a wee bit better, but nah, doesn't matter too much. Right, from here, we've got uh, plenty more to see. Let's go. Again, deep within Lexington, between that and the apartments, you can find a wee diner building over to the right here. Now, the pharmacies, actually, you can just see it through there that we were looking at previously. In here, there's Dead Ghoul Reaver and a Raider with some ammunition. There's also just some items about, as well as the cash register, that hopefully for you will have some money. Now, this is where things get really interesting. This is one of the best Pawalski shelters you'll ever find because this soldier is currently clutching a mini nook. Bit, uh, bit of a strange place to be clutching it. Um, I see the three people around him. Maybe he was trying to, you know, do like a, you know, like a Captain America jumping on the mini nook and put himself in here to try and protect them. Uh, possibly, although it looks like everyone was trying to get in, so I'm even more confused as to why he has the mini nook. Going just around the corner though, you can find the ghouls having a bit of a pool party. Now for many of you, you probably don't know that the ghouls and raiders actually live here pretty much side by side. Nah, I'm just kidding. The AI's off. They they are ignoring each other uh, for us there. There's loads of wild tar berry. I'm actually going to remove the water. I've never, never looked in this pool to see anything worthwhile. Uh, the answer is no, but there's a deck chair. Always got to be. Be a deck chair just through into the pool and that pretty much covers a lot of the interior of lexington now we are going to actually nip more to the outskirts where we'll find uh, some more intriguing places i thought i'd seen everything in lexington until i came across this now this uh, seemingly abandoned basketball court has a bit of a darker twist to it as uh, there appears to be a settler who has uh, whoop, just been <laughs> left here to, uh, to his own devices for some reason. Um, yeah, it's amazing some of the things that you just pass and you never quite notice. Must have been the Raiders. Right, well, speaking of which, they're actually just around the bend here. In the heart of Lexington, north of the apartments, you can find this uh, ominous looking catwalk. It seems like a fur bit of a journey. If you want to find this place, uh, the basketball court they'll be hitting up next is right here. Now I'm going to climb all of these and I'll show you what's at the top. Okay, so we've made it all the way to the top. Now you will be ambushed by a raider uh, once you get up here, but when you look into the sink, yeah, you know you know exactly what's happening here. We have a bone saw present, uh, we've got a weapons workstation, and uh, of course the raider, there he is bouncing out of his room where uh, he gets up to all sorts of shenanigans there's someone hiding under the bed he's got bedside table heads he's got drugs because i don't think a sane person could really do what he is doing he's probably responsible for what happened in the basketball court speaking of which uh, let's go over and have a look at that this is without a doubt one of the 
most out of reach suitcases in the entire game. If you don't have a jetpack, you're not getting anywhere near this. East in the heart of Lexington. It's uh, on top of uh, right beside the Raider penthouse. But there's no easy or convenient way to get to this. You would have to quite literally just jetpack over to get to this level where you can find a uh, a couple that went out together on one of their one of the high rises in the city with a wee suitcase beside it. it normally has a rather random assortment of items within the suitcase i never knew this place existed so uh, yeah that definitely gets a plus one for me on uh, complete element of surprise uh, but the basketball court i can assure you also holds something similar let's go the Raiders here, just west of Mystic Pines, as you enter Lexington, are just ready to ambush you. Now, this is one of their much, uh, much more fortified positions. Uh, you can tell by all the wee cans that you can chime. Now, once you chime them, uh, you will alert an awful lot of Raiders to your presence. They are heavily armed. They have many turrets, and uh, quite frankly, one thing on their mind, and that is dispatching of you. Now with these three buildings you can parkour up to this one. You can open a wee expert lock safe provided you deal with uh, the owners that uh, are not about to let you just come up here and take their property. You know it's probably taken a long time for them to gather all those uh, all those items within the safe. Now uh, this spans three buildings and uh, there's really only two ways up. That way I showed you and a wee catwalk at the back. This raider up here is just living her best life. Barbecue, cooking station, and a cam box. Really, what more does a raider need? Right beside the Starlight Drive-In and south of Bedford Station, you can find a little survivalist stash that someone has left here. Besides the suitcase, you can get yourself some sugar bombs, cram, pork and beans, nuka cola for your troubles. Now, uh, whoever brought them here is clearly gone and... Obviously, for anyone doing especially a survival run or any run, you know, nipping by here just to grab some equipment is definitely worthwhile. Before this, we, uh, we're we going to head on here to the real car hideout. Another uh, quite a cool wee unmarked location right over here. Can I squeeze through? I can indeed. There is a novice locked door now. I have one bobby pin and a dream. And to prove to all of you, I don't need to use commands all the time. All right, jumping inside, we've got a wooden crate, a poor fellow who was just kind of sleeping on the train, and a cooler with a melon in it. Eh, pretty decent. Right, now this is uh, definitely one of the more amusing sights that one comes across in the Commonwealth. Here is a guy in a bath with a colander, a jet, and uh, what I'm imagining is he kind of filled up the ice bath using the fridge somehow. Um, I'm sure there's some interaction there that uh, someone who knows more about fridges could explain. And he's got some Danny Boy apples. Wonder if there's anything underneath them? Or her? We, we actually have no idea at this stage. Although it's probably a dude. Let's face it. Is there many females who would, would be crazy enough to do this? Maybe it was too warm. It was a hot summer. Um, or he was doing like the... Uh, uh, an ice, just an ice bath before the bombs fell? Possibly. Alright, let's go on to the next location. Ah, another brilliant find west of the rotten landfill near Bedford Station. Under the freeway, you can find plenty of radios on top of a locked gate with several skeletons inside. Now, you might be wondering what on earth is going on in there. There's some loads of rat away. Uh, this is actually a jump scare. Uh, once you're venturing in... Oh, uh, yeah, that never never gets old. I, I can't prepare myself for something like that. So, apart from <laughs> jump scare, there's a Jangles the Moon Monkey, loads of skulls. It was a real... Real strange place that, that we skull you see in a lot of Easter eggs is also here, as well as the tool chest. There is no gate, or there, no gate, there's no key to get inside. And unfortunately, in order to get all that juicy rattle right and caps, one must actually break in. Now, yeah, uh, you obviously have to deal with the local wildlife who probably killed the previous owner. But once you do that, we can actually head on to another location this is the lexington military checkpoint over here um now obviously whatever faction you go with will eventually occupy this zone the apc cannot be accessed unfortunately and there's normally a chest sitting about here um once of course you you get further into the game and you choose whatever faction 
Uh, it, it should be somewhere around here. I haven't got this far. Uh, this is actually quite a low level account. But you can definitely trust me from uh, my later games in this area. And comments from other subscribers. It's great. Anyway, let's, uh, let's go on to our next point. So we're south of the Rotten Landfill. We just finished looking at the wee APC uh, checkpoint over here. Now, this location right here is actually the access point onto the freeway towards Lexington. Now, I feel that everyone needs to know where this is as it gives you a great vantage point all the way to where uh, the freeway goes off in every direction. So uh, certainly a useful place to know, and if you venture on further on to it, there's actually a wee bit of a camp over here to the left as well. Um, sugar bombs, we've got toolbox, and a wee mattress that you can rest your head before venturing on. There is a very key point later on up here. In fact, what we will do is we will uh, we will just keep marching on till uh, till we get to the end here. Uh, the, the point in question, it's called the Lexington Jumping Off Point. Now, I thought there was actually something on the ground. You know, maybe it was like a diving board or something. I was wrong. This is, in fact, just a point where you can access any part of the freeway. And it is just here. Uh, because you can quite safely jump down to here, take any ramp in any direction you want. And if you want, you can continue on down again, and uh, we can go south, north, gaining a good vantage over a lot of raiders in the local area. And uh, yeah, it makes it quite a strategically important place to know, um, right dead center and the highway. Alright, so let's go on to the end here, where we can find uh, a few more items. About 10 feet on, you can find uh, this site over here to the right. This is actually another access point to the Lexington Highway, um, where it breaks apart just past the Corvega assembly plant. Uh, the important thing is watching this kind of drunk driver skeleton kind of hanging out of the, the door or the window of the car. Um, it just seems to have rallied right off. Maybe when the bombs fell, lost control. Easy, it can happen. Uh, let's see, there's uh, she usually is a few raiders up here, so you got to be careful. Um, let's see, ooh, tube flange. We bet as well. And uh, yeah, actually where we're venturing to next, we'll conclude at that bus up there. Well, the bus, that's a truck, but behind that truck is a bus. So I'm going to nip over there. I promised you a quantum bus, and here, just east of Walden Pond and near Drumlin Diner, we can find a little ramp onto the freeway, conveniently, through this bus. Right, now, once we've jumped up, we will have to do a light jog, but we can see a wee railroad sign pointing us in the right direction. And uh, what a better place to conclude this entire section of videos. Plenty of feral ghouls around what must have been a wee settler's uh, camp. A wee toolcase must have fought off quite a few before succumbing. Uh, there's this boy who I think gets up. You alive? He's alive. Yeah. So the wee railroad thing. It's actually telling us to go on, but we can go on to the bus. Um, on board there is a few ghouls that will emerge and the reason I call it the quantum bus is, as you guessed it, there's a new code of quantum guaranteed up by the driver, but that's not all. There's actually another stash that I didn't know about. I, I, I thought that was it, and I always used to turn away. So, let's go right to the end where we'll find a little camp where someone's been chilling. And go inside, first aid, tool case, uh, lots of radar armor and that there. And uh, once you've had a wee look around here, we can just go all the way to the end. And uh, that's where we were earlier, obviously, up towards the, the Lexington overpass uh, near the Corvega plant. And, uh, yeah, there's been a brilliant wee journey. Uh, we've essentially covered the entire northwest corner. Uh, I've been using the dividing line of the freeway here um, on the map. So, uh, yeah, about 120 locations we've covered at least. Um, this is season one. Let me know what you think in the comments. If you've made it this far, fair play. Thank you. And uh, yeah, want to know your thoughts. Uh, season 2 will probably be covering uh, the likes of Fort Hagen and this surrounding area. So if you want to see that, let me know what was your favourite place. And uh, yeah, I'll see you all in the next one. Thank you.